Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to our channel Testing in Nutshell. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and we are looking forward to get started with a brand new playlist of Jira Advance. Based on request of many, we thought let's complete this playlist with remaining options what we could not cover like quite a few years ago when we created the Jira Fundamentals. And of course there are many more things which people now use quite often and we thought we will just add more value to the playlist as people are looking forward to learn about them but they are not really having a good content to support it so in that context uh, we'll be coming up with this new playlist and today is the first tutorial of this particular channel or this particular playlist where we are getting started with components in jira now components in jira are very very useful to categorize your product into different segments and track them independently thus it's going to be very very helpful in terms of how exactly you can customize your product into multiple segments, categorize your set of work items under that, and how exactly you would have the benefits of having being component created. But let me tell you right here, creating component is not mandatory. It is completely optional, subjected the organizations, subjected the team needs to break their work up and then manage it. So let's get started quickly and understand the same thing with hands-on exercise on what exactly components in Jira is. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be trying to understand more about how to use components in Jira and we'll be covering three different segments for it. That what are the components, how to use components in Jira, the benefits of components in Jira. In order to get started, the very first thing what we are looking at is first of all defining what is components. In terms of Jira, components are basically categorizers of your product into different segments. For example, if I'm talking about critically preparing a cell phone, then cell phone is my end product but when it is getting developed, when it is getting prepared, it does not mean that we are tracking everything from a phone perspective. For example, a stakeholder doesn't come to your desk and ask you, hey, how much phone is ready? <laughs> it does not even ask you like, hey, uh, where are we on my phone or uh, what is the progress on the phone? Because, of course, everyone understands here that the product cannot be discussed or cannot be used as a scoped item or cannot be used for any kind of progress and monitoring until unless it is completely built. In that context, we break a cell phone into multiple segments or multiple verticals. For example, as you know, when we create a phone, right, you might be aware that you know when we, when we build a phone, there are multiple teams which work behind the screen. Number one, for example, one of the team will be working on the operating system, which is to be built for this. Another team will be working on the body of the cell phone. Another team will be working on all the sensors. Another team will be working on the display, which is screens and etc. Another team will be working on kind of like, you know, camera or something or motherboard. So point here is that as we have different teams working on this, I may be more curious while the product is getting built that where are we on each segment? Because not all the segment goes in the same schedule or kind of like in the same pace. So some of the products will be going a little slow, some of the things will be built later, or something starts half the way when the project has been already completed in half the way, right? So in that context, we say that components just basically are used in Jira to bring down a big product into multiple categories or different verticals, or you can say segments. Similarly, if you're talking about any other product, you can simplify your product into different segments by using components. So how exactly to use this component in Jira? First of all, you need to learn about the navigations and how to create them and then you can see the use of it. So on the left hand side to your project, you would find an option called as components. Just click on that. Currently, if you observe, I'm using a project which is to create a food delivery application. As you understand, a food delivery application is something which collects order requests from an end user where hotels process it and a delivery partner picks it up from the hotel and deliver to the user's doorstep. Now point here is, I can talk about this food delivery app as a product as well, but it may not make any sense till I have some good visibility of how the product looks like. 
So in that context, I have broken all my work or in simple terms, I'm categorizing every single issue, be it an epic, story, task, bug under multiple segments so that I can talk very precisely which one is going smooth and which one needs attention. So we just created three components here, including hotels, delivery partner and customers. Now any of my work item within the project will be back tagged to these components, right? For an example, taking the example of our phone, how exactly can we quickly create a component in Jira? So it depends on your access if you have the rights of creating a component. It completely depends on your organization structure and Jira administrator. If in case you don't have the rights and somebody has asked you to do that, all you need is the permission to create a component. Quite often, it's project manager who basically creates the component for the project and the team looks forward to use it. So in, in order to create a component, all you need to do is come to the right hand side and click on create component. As you say, create component, give a name to it. For example, I'm calling it out as software considering I'm making a simple calculation software and trying to break this into two different components that is software and hardware. So software is one of my component and I would can I can come here and give a description also. For example, software includes the software part of the product right and we do have to select a component lead basically the person who is taking the ownership on that particular component or other way around you can say that if users have any concern about that component or queries they can always reach out to this person following the protocols of Jira you need to start typing the name to search for a user and again default assignee is a field where you say that if any issue is created with this component being added, then by default, it should be assigned to someone, right? If that's the case, you can define that person name right here. If in case not, then you can just leave it project default, which is currently set to unassigned as default. Save it. Now, similarly, just quickly reiterating the same activity on the other part of the component that is hardware. And uh, of course, this includes the hardware part of the application or whatever. I think this was phone, right? Anyways, uh, that's not our area of concern. Our concern is how to create components. So again, you can drop down here and select a component manager and just save it. So point here is this is how uh, the two components got listed alongside. I just don't, didn't want to delete the other three. But yeah, you can always come here and go ahead and delete it. Or if you want to modify, you can modify it by clicking on edit. All the information will be displayed on the screen here. Now, how exactly to use the component? All you need to do is whenever you create an issue now, all you would do is you just write a simple summary here. For example, um, as a user, I want to be able to make a phone call or let's make it more technical make a voice call so again this user story belongs to a component so just scroll through the component field and come down and you can find your components listed here so you can just select hey this is a software parameter and tag it and again if in case you have any story which contributes to both the software and hardware and you can select both of them here right so there there's no restriction that you can select only one component at a time if in case you find an epic you find a story task subtask or even a bug which contributes to multiple components you're free to select both of them or many other of them right whatever it is applicable now point is when should i create components of course as you are going to use them while creating the issues, the components must be created initially in the project where the management decides how are you going to break your big product into multiple segments so that it becomes easy to track. Let's click on create and the issue will be created. Other fields, you can cover it in my other playlist. And uh, right here, if I just go ahead and quickly refresh this item, 
of this particular page, you would see that it started reflecting me that currently one issue exists under this software component. On the other hand, if you see my other issues, uh, other components from this project is customer, it has around six issues. So point here is component doesn't only try to, you know, categorize and simplify your product or your work of dealing with a project, but also gives you a reporting solution. It becomes much more convenient to get a data quickly that, hey, what's happening on my software side? What's happening on my hardware side? And where are we on these items? For an example, if I have to pick up delivery partner quickly, I, these are just hyperlinks, okay? You can click either on the number of issues or you can click on the name of the component. And as you click on the customer, you would be automatically taken to a filtered output of all those items, okay, which come under this particular component. Of course, you can further filter down and say that how many are in to do, how many are in progress, how many are done, which would give you completely precise output that, hey, the three items are in to do, one is done, and another two in progress, which would give you a clear, uh, you know, percentage of where are we on customer as of today. Same way other components can also be calculated and this is going to make your job much, much easier on reporting while the project is going on, right? Because it's, it is just quite often anytime people will just step in and say, hey, can you tell me how things are going on the software side, how things are going on the hardware side, how things are going on the sensor side of the phone? Point is, you may have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 issues in the project at any point of time, but you cannot just sit down manually and sort list which story belongs to sensor, which story belongs to software and hardware. So in that context, it becomes very, very important that if you can add components, then go ahead and add it. But it's not mandatory. It's not really mandatory to break your product always into segments. We're talking about the projects which become very, very huge, very complicated to get a concrete status update or concrete breakup of how the things are happening by different teams. So you can say it could be different teams, it could be different segment of the product. If in case you're finding it difficult to deal with them or manage them in Jira, components is for you. But if you're dealing with very, very simple applications like making a website, okay, you know what, you just don't need anything. <laughs> Okay, you don't need any kind of components to be added there because it's a single web page and all you need to do is create different tabs and build this up. So you don't really need components. It's not necessary. So it's not at all mandatory. It's up to you. If you think you're finding it difficult, just go for it. Okay, so I hope you had a wonderful understanding of components here. Uh, we would come back to you with more advanced learning in this playlist. So stay tuned for that. That's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.